uh, the stories about my revisions. So, the first thing I feel I should preface is that this is the natural state of me. I have not showered today and there's no makeup. This is how I work because why make myself pretty for a computer? So, this is my workstation. Um, it's a standing desk and yes, even with my broken foot, I have stood for most of the drafting process of this current project that I cannot tell you the name of, but hopefully soon I can announce. And uh, step one, coffee. I actually don't drink caffeinated coffee anymore, um, but still the ritual of making coffee is super important to my process, so I make several cups of decaf all day long. Step two involves actually assembling everything that I'm going to be working with. First and foremost, we have the book. Um, I work in Scrivener, and so what I have to do is actually compile the book, and then I will print it out. Now, I know a lot of people are like, print, but yes, printing. Um, there is something very different about working with a printed piece of paper, um, particularly for the way my process works, um, and I urge you to try if you never have. Uh, you can go print it off as depot. I invested in a laser printer like seven years ago and still use that. And so yes, I will print it. I print only on one side for my first draft because I'm going to be writing by hand on it a lot. As per usual, it took me like 10 minutes to compile in Scrivener because I forget how I do it every time. Um, also, this project is very strange. It's not like a typical standard format, so I had to do some magic. While I wait for the pages to print, I shall clear off my very messy desk because a clean space leads to a clean mind, and I need a clean mind in order to revise this in three days. Printing took forever because it was a lot of pages. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is poke holes in all those pages, which will be a pain right now, but I will be glad I did later because then I can keep everything very easily in this notebook. Okay, objective complete, desk is cleaned, and holes punched. Uh, I had to upgrade to a larger notebook, no surprise really. Um, even though this is not like a full novel, it's still 250 pages. Um, and since I'm sure some of you are wondering about my lovely Dragon Age books, they're there to keep my computer at eye level. Um, and yes, that is Twitter open in the background because I'm hosting sprints, so come join us if you want to get words written or revised. The next step is to make a plan of attack, which I'm going to do on my awesome whiteboard here. So I have three days to revise this book. It's going to be a very rough and dirty revision just so that I have something cohesive um, to turn into my editor uh, because my first drafts are not coherent. So for this revision I will not be worrying about prose or pacing or anything. We are only worrying about big top level things which are plot, character, and setting. Um, I will break each of these things up and I will address them individually before I actually dive into the manuscript itself, which is where our plan of attack comes in. Normally, I have time to like read the whole manuscript and take notes and really dig in and figure out every single little problem, but I don't have that right now. So instead, I'm just going to have to go off of the fact that I just finished writing this and I can remember the big problem. In terms of plot, there aren't any sort of huge plot holes that I remember, but there are a lot of little objects and things that were key to the plot that I randomly inserted in the middle of the book and I need to introduce sooner. And I'm calling those plot and I'm calling those plot things instead of setting because um, the setting is more about just placement in the world, making things make sense and how they look. And plot is actual things that are important to the story. I have my plan of attack, but I don't want you to see it because spoilers. Um, so yeah. You can see the setting line is much smaller because I haven't actually read the manuscript and so it's hard to gauge what kind of details need to be added. I have to say that this is the most cohesive first draft I've ever finished. Normally it is a gigantic jumble of scenes out of order and it's just a mess. Um, but something about this project, it's actually decent. And when I say decent, I mean it's truly terrible. But. Uh, the prose and the pacing I can fix later um, with my editor, um, but in terms of like actual plot, it's not 
a mess. The biggest changes I'm going to be making are character related things, um, hammering home arcs, making sure that I have planted all of the various um, important flaws and needs of my characters early on so that they have a natural growth. Also, under normal circumstances, um, not only would I read the entire manuscript from beginning to end taking notes, I would also make index cards for every single scene um, so that I have like an easy way to skim through scenes without actually going through the And on those index cards, I would write a short summary of the scene, um, a sort of one-line title of it, and then in colors that match my plan of attack code, I would place all the notes for that scene that need to be fixed. So for example, if a scene has a character in it and I'm working on that character's arc and there's also a plot thread there that's wonky and maybe even the setting isn't clear, then I would write the character note on here in red, the plot note on here in blue, and the setting one in green. And then, uh, then when I'm actually going through and revising it, I use the index card to help me work on the scene. And um, it just sort of helps me make sure that I'm always hitting home all the problems in every scene and I'm not forgetting something. So if you can't tell, I'm super duper organized with revising. Um, I just, it's a very um, daunting process and the easiest way I think to tackle it is to take it piece by piece one little chunk at a time and that helps me keep it. This helps keep everything up here um, because I am only one brain and it's a massive world. Um, and for those of you who really hate revising, I just urge you to remember that this isn't for you. You are revising for your readers so that you can give them the best possible product. So show them you care. And with that, I'm going to make another coffee decaf and actually dive into the manuscript. Ah, scary. Let's go. Hoiting. I just finished 36 pages. I had to move to a chair because, you know, broken foot. Um, but yeah, things are moving really fast right now because I've actually already revised the first 80 pages. Uh, the reason that I already revised the first 80 pages was because I actually gave a proposal to my editor slash team already, so I had to have like a pretty solid chunk to give them. But there are still things that need to be added that I... Uh, there are things that I've added as I finish the book, lots of little plot things. Um, and details and character things that I didn't see coming when I first wrote it, so now I do have to go back and add those, but the actual first 80 pages are pretty polished and solid. Uh, once I get past those 80 pages, though, there will be a lot more work to do, and my pace will, well, to put it as my grandmother would say, I'm gonna be slow as molasses. I took a break, ate some lunch, walked my dogs, Saw all the people going in town to watch the 4th of July parade, felt sad about myself, and now here I am, limping back up the stairs to resume. Revisions. As I go through revising, I am adding paper clips to divide scenes. Um, it, normally, too, I would then add my scene index cards on top. And like I said, I'm super organized when I revise. Um, and just to give you an idea, to give you an idea, um, check marks mean I've made changes. Um, I'm not making a ton because, again, these 80 pages have already been pretty revised and polished. It's just a few plot holes I'm fixing. But since you're probably wondering why there are like weird handwriting fonts, I'll just say what I think I can say without telling you too much about this unannounced project. Um, there are lots of points of view, and so to distinguish between them right now, I'm using these weird fonts. Another update, I am almost halfway through. I'm um, on page 120 and 125 is the halfway mark. I am hoping to get close to like 175 today, but we'll see. Two things, one, um, this is just a rough revise. If I was actually like polishing my prose and worried about pacing, it would take me a lot longer. Two, I am a very fast reviser. I revise much more quickly than I write. Like, I can do a complete rewrite of a book in two weeks. Um, I have. I've done that before. Uh, it's not because my first drafts are good. In fact, my first drafts are awful. I just love revising. It's my favorite. And I'm hoping that if you're watching this, that maybe you'll learn to love revising too. Again, the key is to stay organized and focused and have a game plan so that you can just move from one thing to the next, fixing everything as you go. Oh, it's so fun. So while my husband
goes to a 4th of July party without me. I have moved to the deck because reason 812 to work in a notebook and have holes punched. Everything is super portable. I had to move inside because the fireworks are making, my dogs go crazy. Um, but it is almost 9 o'clock and I am calling it a day. I revised 190 pages, which is definitely a new record for me. Um, Again, I feel the need to emphasize that like, I would normally spend a lot more time on revisions of each scene, pacing, prose, varying up my language, and sentence structure, but I just don't have time for that, so I will get to all of those things later um, when I have more time and can work with my editor, but she needs a draft by Friday, so a draft by Friday I will get her. Um, yeah. So there you go. I'm calling it a, a day and I'm playing Zelda. So in the spirit of full transparency, uh, it's 9.30. I've already revised like 20 pages. Things are going really slow. And now I'm stopping to finally make some breakfast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, can you see this? I'm still in my PJs. So I really need to shower and eat and Yes, and then once that's done, I will resume the revisions, of course. I am clean. I have eaten breakfast. I have harvested all the blueberries from our backyard, which needs to be done every day. And now, I can go back to revisions. All right, let's go. So, a few of you have asked some questions that I want to quickly answer. First question, what is prose? Okay, prose, P-R-O-S-E. These are the words that you choose for your various sentences. So it's just your word choice, basically. Prose also includes like your sentence structure and the length and pacing of your paragraphs. So basically it's just how you construct the actual sentence line by line, paragraph by paragraph story. Uh, someone else asked how long it takes me to write a first draft. Um, if you follow my newsletter, then you know there is no set answer for that question. Sometimes it takes me forever, sometimes drafts come quickly. Windwitch, for example, took two years and I wrote multiple first drafts that I threw away. I threw away like 200,000 words of Windwitch in pursuit of the right story, um, which I'm glad I did, but it was a lot of tossed words. So yeah, two years on that one. The current project that I'm drafting took two months, but it's not a full novel. Uh, this project is a 50,000 word novella thing, um, and yeah, it's definitely the easiest thing I've ever written, but I also tried to write it three years ago without any luck, so, so if we include the like months that I tried three years ago and failed, then it adds to the length on this. Um, lesson that we learned from this, guys, is that I need lots of incubation time before an idea is ready to come out of me. And ultimately that's what happened with Wind Witch, right? I tried to dive into it right after Truth Witch and it was too soon. Um, it just needed time to incubate because, yeah, after about a year and a half of incubation, the idea was ready and it came out of me quite easily. I just, I just needed that time to incubate instead of trying to write lots and lots of words that I ultimately threw out. But now we know moving forward. Um, and also, now, I really need to revise. So, so if you do have questions, feel free to message me or Twitter me, and uh, yeah, I will try to get to them later. And now, back to the pages, huzzah. Things are going very slow today. I'm not that surprised. I've only got like 30 pages left now, but it's the end where all of the various threads that I planted have to connect for the most oomph. Additionally, additionally, I wrote the end, like the last 50 pages in about three days, not even, and I just wrote them a few days ago, so it's all still way too fresh for me to have much perspective, and additionally, it's just not great prose because I was in a rush. To all the people who are asking for more like in-depth information on how I prep for revisions and do it, go to my website. SusanDenner.com. I have an entire guide to revisions there, which is kind of basically what I'm doing now. I'm just walking you through it. Alas, I do not have the time to like walk everyone through step by step everything that I do. Um, but if you go to SusanDenner.com backslash four dash writers, you will find my guide to revisions, which literally breaks everything down. And there are even worksheets. So. Back to answering questions while I'm pausing for lunch. Um, someone asked, 
for tips on mixing action and dialogue and honestly I urge you to look at your favorite books see how they do it break it apart and really try to uh, mimic what other writers do seriously just look at how they weave um, action and dialogue together and and try to emulate uh, additionally I urge you to try to find a trusted critique partner who can give you yay or nay uh, someone else asked how do you get over the fear of writing crappy prose specifically while you're drafting um, and this is where speed is gonna be your friend join some writing sprints on Twitter or if you're really brave try the write or die app when you're intentionally trying to write fast then you're sort of forced to turn off your internal editor and just go, go, go. And the more you practice at it, the better and better you will get at that. And the internal editor will eventually just back off. So I'm almost done, but um, there's still like kind of a lot to do because I didn't make my scene index cards and so each scene didn't have a little handy dandy here's what to add. So I forgot a lot of stuff. Additionally, um, dog because I hadn't read through the entire book once before I made my plan of attack, I also forgot a lot of things, so I'm gonna have to go back through and add more. I won't work through the entire thing again though. I will just go back to the scenes that need something woven in or removed, and I will do that. Um, and then after that, I get to type in all my changes. Super fun. That was spoken with much sarcasm. Typing in is easily the worst part of the whole job, but I have to work on printed page. Um, the story is just so much clearer for me. Uh, I urge you to try it if you haven't before. It really changes the way you look at the story. So I'm gonna make a cup of decaf joe, and then I'm gonna kick off a sprint on Twitter at 315, hashtag sprinting daydreamers, and I'm gonna finish this sucker. See how far we can get by the end of the day. Peace. Someone asked if I type changes in as I go or at the end, and the answer is at the end because I might make more changes to earlier pages, so if I had already typed it in, that would have been a waste of my time. Does that make sense? Someone asked a fantastic question of how do publishers factor in incubation time for authors, and the answer is they don't. They don't care about our incubation time, um, and admittedly some authors don't need nearly as much time as I do. Uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately in YA publishing, readers expect a book a year and so authors really don't get the chance to incubate like we would like. And that's why a lot of authors, myself included, and a lot of my friends hit super hard burnout. Fortunately, my current publisher is super awesome and they are giving me more time for my next projects. Um, they don't really have a choice. I need it. Windwitch broke me and yeah, here we are. But yeah, a lot of incubation comes down to like being a master strategist. Have an idea, let it sit for however long you need while you work on other projects. Then that idea has grown into a, a big enough story for a novel and you move over. I'm done. Ish. I probably spent like an hour trying to write freaking sea shanty for one of the last scenes. Anyway, now I need to stretch. After my little stretch, uh, I'm going to take stock of what I did not add and still need to go back and add and just kind of get a handle on how much work I still need to do before I feel like this is giveable to my editor. While I was roughly revising, I kept index cards within reach and whenever I would find something that I needed to add, I would put it on an index card. A lot of these things are just little lines like think outside or laugh, it's funny. So right now it's really just a matter of like going through and finding the, the right scene or spot to actually add those little lines because they're, they're important little seeds that have to be planted. Um, but they're not hard, they're just things to add, little. But then there are still some bigger things that I maybe remembered to add once but not throughout um, and so I do still need to figure those out and that will be the next and hopefully last thing I tackle. As for my revisions, I have filled all the little holes that were easily filled and I really only have one big one left and I'm saving that for tomorrow. I'm gonna call it a day. Karate starts in like 30 minutes so I'm gonna go to the dojo.
Tis time. Ignoring whatever's happening over here with my hair. Now you won't be able to look away. Uh, it's time for me to begin. I can't look away. It's time for me to begin typing in changes. There, that's better. We'll just pretend. And that means that I will take all the changes that are in the text here and type them into the manuscript. Uh, there are a lot more towards the end. The beginning's pretty spare, but the end, uh, but the end is where, obviously, well, after the first 80 pages is where I <laughs> made the most changes. I'm going to have to do something about that hair. It's going to distract me all day. So this is my setup for when I'm typing things in. Um, we got the whole manuscript here, T, computer screen, manuscript, or whatever scene I'm working on right now, keyboard, mouse, other things. And normally I would actually use an ergonomic keyboard and an ergonomic mouse for this because it really does damage to the wrists, but I'm feeling lazy. So we'll see how far I go before I finally crack and go downstairs for my, my stuff. And also normally I would stand on that mat, it would be pulled out, um, but with the foot still not quite up to snuff, I am instead going to be sitting today. Yeah, not as good for my back, but that's life. In all my rushing, I have gotten pretty scattered, which I don't like, I feel very disorganized. Um, and there are a few things that I still need to add in while I'm typing in, and so I have made little uh, post-its. And essentially I've just put those post-its on every single scene where I think I might be able to weave that in. So for example, I need to add little earthquakes throughout. And so I've just put a post-it that says earthquake on every single scene where I think I could possibly add one. And so now when I reach that scene during type-ins, I can just try to weave in a little tremor because yeah, it's just like a line or two that I need to say that the ground is quaking, what's happening, and that's it. But, as I've said before, normally I would have hair, mom, that kind of thing, tremors, earthquakes listed on my note cards so that when I had been writing in my changes, I would have seen that on the index card and remembered to do it before. So I've reached a point, I'm 40 pages into typing in, and it's a scene that I have to cut. I've decided to remove it entirely and rewrite it in a totally different way. The reason being, the reason is that the scene at, in the form that it currently is isn't really like adding anything to the story. It is pure fan service and I just know that my editor is going to be like, we don't need this. So, so I'm going to write this new scene um, and it's going to be important to the plot and actually add forward momentum and then I'm going to slide it right in where this other scene was before. That's the plan. I think it's super important that every single scene be critical to the plot, so I'm a big fan of cutting and combining, rearranging, so that you never get a repeated beat, um, and so that there's really never any wasted prose. And of course, in order to really do that and to get the clearest possible manuscript, you really have to be organized, um, almost surgical, in how you approach your revisions. A lot of people hate it, but I think it's the most fun part of it all. I'm just gonna like hold my hair down from now on. Um, anyway, so I got 80 pages typed in and now I am pausing for some lunch and I have an appointment at 1.30, so. I'm pretty sure that I will not reach my goal of typing the entire manuscript in today, but that's okay. I do have tomorrow still before it's technically due, um, so. Yeah, new goal was more like half or a little past. Finally back at my desk, hair is still a mess. Um, someone asked a really good question, which is when I say I'm typing in, does that mean I'm retyping the entire manuscript? No. Um, so here's an example page. You can see there are things written on it. So I just add those. Sometimes I also cut things. So there's a lot cut at the top of the page. Um, insert things, rearrange sentences, move it around. So yeah, I just like go in and make those changes. I don't retype the whole thing unless a scene is so brutally massacred, it's easier. More questions coming in and I will answer them later, but I wanted to show you very quickly an example of a scene where I will just type in the whole thing because there is so much changed. It's just going to be easier to retype everything. 
Finally, an update on my actual revisions. I have typed in 130 pages, which is not as far as I would like to be right now, but the last two scenes I really gutted, so they took a while to type in. Hopefully things pick up now. Yay, I hit page 150, so I'm allowed to stop for the day and eat dinner. Woohoo, food. Someone asked uh, at what stage I print out the manuscript. I print it out after I have a first draft. Um, and then, yeah, I print it again after every major rewrite and draft because that's how I work on paper. I draft a lot by hand as well. I like the physical feeling of working on paper. And because I have momentum on my side and I'm a glutton for punishment, I'm just gonna work for a little bit longer till like nine o'clock. Then I'm allowed to eat. All right, until tomorrow. Bye guys. Back in my office finally and ready to kick this revision's butt. Uh, but I do feel that since a lot of you are watching this and asking questions and stuff, I should mention I have a newsletter. If you're not already following it, susandinner.com backslash newsletter. Check it out. So far things are going a bit slow, but hopefully I can get back in the groove. Although I do have to pause in an hour to make a very quick errand. Someone asked how I fared last night. I did well, I worked until about 9.30. So, slight hiccup. Um, this project has a lot of design and illustrations in it. And so, the art department needs it by noon. Um, alas, there is no way I can finish typing everything in, in an hour. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and compile what I have and send it over for the art department so that they have the framework to work with. And then, and then after that, I will resume my typing in so that I can at least get my editor a fully revised manuscript. Um, the art department doesn't need the, the right prose. They just need to know where illustrations go. Still, I hate sending anyone a less than perfect product. It's like being caught without your clothes on. No, I don't want them to see, but oh well, that's life. One would think by now that I would be like better at this and not so embarrassed and vulnerable about sharing work, but because I mean like I Instagram myself without makeup. I'm really transparent about publishing. I talk in my newsletter all the time about like how much I suck as a general human being and how often I fail and fail and fail and fail, and yet I still can't appear weak and hand over something that I haven't revised at least once. <sighs> anyway, enough stories. I gotta compile this and get it to the art department. So, let's go. I'll be back later. That was so stressful. Compiling the manuscript, which is like a bunch of different diaries and documents and things and all these different handwritings to distinguish who's who, Oh my gosh, it took the whole time. Now watch. The art department won't be there. They'll probably already have left because publishing has summer Fridays. Or the document won't work because it's a bunch of fonts that nobody else has installed. Now we resume our regularly scheduled program of typing in revisions. And I gotta say, I have no motivation left. I just put all my energy into compiling this for the art department. And now my brain's like, you're done. You finished it. It's compiled. It's sent off. Why would you keep working on it? And I'm going to have to tell my brain I'm afraid that that loop has not actually been closed. There is more work to do. And we must forge on. I'm going to stop for some food first, though. I feel like I've earned it. Also, before I go, thank you guys for everything. You guys have been so supportive. You've been sending me messages and tweets and questions and... Thanks, it means a lot. <sighs> I'm flagging pretty hard. I've probably got another two hours of work. It's not much, but I've really hit a wall physically. I think I'm going to have to make coffee with caffeine. The thing about type ins is that I'm not just typing things in, I'm also making lots of like line edits as I go. And then, of course, this time I have all these post its for things I forgot to add earlier, so I'm weaving those in. So it's still a lot of mental drain. My reward for when I finish, I've decided is gonna be Mass Effect 
original Mass Effect. That trilogy is like comfort food for me, and it's been like a year since I replayed the whole thing. I mean, it's totally reasonable to binge Bioware games at least once a year, right? Right? I know you guys agree. Okay, two hours. So close, so close. I am done. I'm done. Who did it? Who did it? They sprang a deadline on me a week ago. And I met it. I said I met it. Oh, I met that deadline. I met that. In all seriousness, though, I feel pretty good myself. I still have to compile the damn thing, but I'm done with the actual, like, work and thinking. I can just let my brain sink into mush now. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I just sent the document to my editor. I am both super nervous for her to read because it could be a mess. And I'm also really excited because I feel good about it. But that could just be the uh, exhaustion speaking. <laughs> Thank you for all the well wishes, guys. We did it. Um, someone asked if for each different thing that I'm revising, like character, plot, setting, do I read through the entire manuscript looking for problems with only that? And the answer is no. I just do one massive read through taking notes on each of those things and I have like a piece of paper and I add to each column basically when I notice a problem there. And sometimes problems will overlap and fall in multiple. And when I say multiple I mean categories. Like if something is a plot problem but it also affects character then I'll put it in both columns and fix it together. So hope that helps. Good luck with your revisions. And someone asked if I use a separate notebook for my notes, like brainstorming, and for actual drafting, and no, I don't. I probably should, but I don't. I like to have everything in one place, so, yeah. Someone asked the program I use to draft in, and the answer is um, Scrivener. I use Scrivener almost exclusively, so if you haven't checked it out, definitely do. It's awesome. And do I have any advice for young writers? Um, my number one advice is just to have fun, there's no rush. I know when I was younger I thought like, I need to be published now, it needs to be immediate, and that's not true, it's much better. So live your life, like have lots of experiences, meet lots of people because it will make your writing that much richer, um, and you can write at any age. There's no expiration date on getting published, you can literally be any age, so enjoy, your, enjoy yourself, explore, travel if you can, yeah. That's my advice. Um, and of course, write as often as you want to write, but yeah, don't feel pressured to hurry. Don't feel pressure.